Our word for today is crossing. Our starting point Bible verse, 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. We have a history of crossing. This is a picture of Adam and Eve crossed over into Satan's realm, the shadow of death. This is a picture of mankind crossing the point of no return with God. This is a picture of God tells Noah God has crossed into destroy mode. This picture illustrates Psalms 32.6. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. They decided they were ready to cross over to God's way when it started to look really bad. This picture illustrates the blessing to be gained from timely crossing. This picture illustrates we gain life by crossing over as God directs. This picture reminds us that people like those who built the Tower of Babel forget what God can do when people cross over into the disobedient realm again. Approximately 200 years later, after the Tower of Babel, God called Abram, Abraham, out of the Ur, the city of the Chaldees, Babylon. And God took him to Canaan, the land that we know as Israel, and spiritual Jerusalem. God told Abram, Abraham, that God was going to make a great nation out of him. But Abram, Abraham, and Sarai, Sarah didn't have any children. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Isaac fathered Jacob. Jacob fathered 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. This picture illustrates, but Jacob's sons crossed over into evil when they sold Joseph Jacob's favorite son into slavery because they were jealous. This picture reminds us of Joseph who was treated badly but he continued to act like one of God's children and did not cross over. This picture reminds us that God blessed Joseph because he resisted crossing over into the bad place. This picture reminds us that God has a way of reminding us that we will cross over on his terms if we refuse to live our lives correctly. This picture reminds us that crossing back into fellowship with those that stay with God may be very painful and will be very shameful as it was for Joseph's brothers. This picture reminds us that God may put us into a difficult place when he brings us back into fellowship and forces us to cross back. This picture reminds us that God will raise up a savior to lead us out of the slavery and across the wilderness. This picture reminds us that God will lead us through. God took them to the promised land and they crossed over the Jordan River. Joshua led them. God was with them in the Ark of the Covenant, which was his house on earth. When the priest's feet touched the river, the waters of the river were stopped. The arrow points to the picture of the water to show that God stopped the water. This is a picture of the water which was stopped until the people 
crossed. God told them to carry 12 stones into the river and set them down, a stone for each tribe. After they crossed, the river closed back up and they went forward. They set the stones up in Gilgal as a memorial and they took the promised land. But they frittered it away. The 12 tribes crossed back into Babylon. God told Moses, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house, far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And the key word there is ensign. You have seen ensigns like this one that the Romans carried at the front of their army. They are also known as standards. Their ensigns represented each family or tribe. It was the ensign of their father's house. But family just wasn't enough. Hundreds of years before Jerusalem and the children of Israel fell, Isaiah prophesied another crossing. Isaiah 11.10 And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. The root of Jesse was King David's dad, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. The Jewish champion, the Messiah. To it shall the Gentiles seek. This is a picture of John the baptizer, John the Baptist, and Jesus after John baptized Jesus. This picture reminds us of the 12 stones in the Jordan River. But now Jesus is the rock the cornerstone, the 13th stone in the crossing. Do you remember what God said in Matthew 3, 17? God tells us, Jesus is my son, God's beloved son. Matthew 3, 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Which was prophesied and fulfilled in the virgin birth, at Jesus' birth. So, what do you get when you cross a branch out of the stem of Jesse with God's Son? You get the most vulnerable, invulnerable God-man that ever lived. And the only one who could create the most wonderful crossover event in history. God has made a cleft in the rock like he did for Moses. And when this world of dust comes to a close and flesh is gone, we will survive because we are spirit. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And we are the holy seed 
because we are in Jesus. And how do we do that? By crossing over. Believe and have life in him. If you believe, you need to tell God. Bow your head and pray, Dear God, I have sinned and I am sorry. I believe that you sent Jesus to save me from my sins. I want to accept Jesus as my Savior and I want to be forgiven. I ask that you forgive me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.